pointing in the corner. Okay. And you hey guys, uh, welcome to this week's tip. We're going to talk about indoor archery and your setup. Um, first off, let's talk about arrows. Um, if you're new to indoor archery um, and you want to start a league, join your rec your local league. Um, you might notice a lot of guys are shooting fatter arrows and the reason for shooting the fatter arrows is to grab the lines in case your shot is a little bit off and what guys do these fat arrows are very stiff and to kind of combat that a little bit to build in a little more forgiveness into the arrow what you want to do is load up the front of these arrows with a lot of weight uh, for instance I'm running 250 grains in the front of these triple X arrows um, also, what you want to do is run as much vein as you can run without running into clearance issues. So, for instance, I'm running a hard helical on a 4-inch feather. Um, and really what you're trying to do is stabilize that arrow as soon as you can out of the bow since you only have 20 yards. So, don't be afraid to shoot really slow, really fat, heavy, stiff arrows. Um, in my opinion, you can't go too stiff. Um, just make sure when you load up the front of that arrow with a lot of weight, you don't go too far and actually get into too weak of a spine. Uh, so let's move on to the bow. Uh, if you're new to indoor archery or just tournament archery in general, first thing you might see is some long stabilizers um, and usually a bar on the back as well if not even a V-bar setup. So and these are going to have quite a bit of weight on them. For instance I'm running seven ounces on the front of my 30 inch rod and then I have 28 ounces on the back of my 15 inch bar. Um, and that's a 4 to 1 ratio. It's fairly common, um, but your weight is really personal preference. You can't just go out and ask somebody and they can tell you definitively what you need to run. Generally, 4 to 1 is a pretty common ratio, but you just have to play with that and see what works best for you. So, for instance, if you're having a you float pattern you notice you're moving left to right more than you're moving up and down you want to go ahead and add a little bit of weight to your front bar um, and the opposite for if your float pattern is more vertical you want to go ahead and add some weight to your back bar um, once you have that ratio figured out that gives you the best float pattern um, the tightest radius basically you want you can play with adding more weight but keeping it in that ratio um, so if you have a very sporadic fast movement, you're going to want to add a little more weight or maybe even play with your draw length. Lengthen that out just a hair. Um, the more weight you run, generally you have a lot slower float pattern. Um, you can get too much weight where you really can't control it and you just have a really slow loopy, loopy hold. Um, and it's hard to get back to the, to the X once you get off. Um, but anyway... There's a lot of videos on stabilization. Look up George Riles. He has some great ones on it. Um, but anyway, we'll move on to the target site. If you're going to run your hunting bow and you can only afford to upgrade one thing or only want to upgrade one thing, definitely do the site first. Um, and look into getting a site with clicks. These clicks make it very easy to very finely and precisely get your 20 yard spots dead on. I mean, you can really click this thing in, just very minor adjustments. Also, you might look at running a lens in your site to just kind of blow up this site picture and really let you focus in on that X. For instance, I'm running a six power lens. And a lot of times with that higher power lens though, the issue is you start to blur out the target. It gets kind of fuzzy. Um, so I have a clarifier in my peep sight and that brings it back to clear. So you kind of have to play with that a little bit. There's some charts telling you which power lens works with which clarifiers. Those are readily available online. Um, let's move on to the rest. Generally for indoor archery, what you're going to run into is a lot of blade rest. And what why they're running that blade rest is with the spring steel launcher they have on them, it has a little bit of forgiveness in the fact that, that spring steel will actually absorb some of the vertical knock travel on your bow if you have some of those issues and really lead to a little more forgiving setup. I run a limb driven blade rest and that is so I can run any vein I want and not run into clearance issues. So I get kind of both benefits there. I still have the spring steel and also I get the clearance of a drop away rest. 
Uh, last but not least, we'll talk about let off. Since a lot of guys are shooting, for instance, this bow is 50 pounds, so I'm running 65% let off. And that gets my holding weight back up to more what I'm used to, especially if you guys are coming from a hunting bow and you're used to a little higher let off on a heavier poundage bow, you might luck into that. Since you're only running 50 pounds, if you run an 80% let off per se, you're really not holding a whole lot at full draw. And that can lead to some pretty, pretty wild float patterns. So bump that let off down and that allows you to actually run a little more weight on your stabilizers, which overall leads to a little more stable float pattern, which is what you want. It's going to get you some more X counts. So thanks for watching guys. Let us know how we did. Be sure to like and share with all your friends and thanks for watching Fletch DPV.